अठारह यही कंज्यूमर हेल्पलाइन This is Face the Nation, broadcasting live from the CNN IBN headquarters in New Delhi with Sagari Ka Ghosh. We kill them and we don't give them food. Hello, Sagari We're focusing tonight on an inhuman reality in urban cities, the ill-treatment of domestic help. A doctor couple who'd gone on a vacation to Thailand, allegedly leaving their 13-year-old maid locked up and starving in their flat at Dwarka in southwest Delhi, was today denied anticipatory bail by a Delhi court. Abuse and violence against domestic help is becoming a common feature in urban India. Is our culture of domestic servants nothing but modern-day slavery? First to report, then we'll hear from our panelists. The ordeal this 13-year-old maid suffered will be hard for her to forget. Her employers, both doctors living in an upmarket area in Delhi, locked her up and left for a six-day holiday to Bangkok. She was rescued by the Delhi police on Thursday after she cried out for help from her balcony. The police says the teenager was traumatized and had been physically abused. An FIR has been registered against the couple under the Juvenile Justice and Child Labour Act for causing hurt and illegal detention of the child. बच्ची यहाँ पे पिछले साल भर से काम कर रही है और ये बच्ची को कोई भी सैलरी नाम का कोई भी चीज नहीं मिला। ठीक से खाना नहीं देते हैं और वो every two three months में कहीं भी घूमने जाते हैं तो इसको लॉक करके चले जाते हैं। this was not an isolated incident. The girl confessed that she had been left alone several times like this. The couple, who was expected to return on Saturday, is absconding. The Delhi police on Monday issued a lookout notice against them. With Parikshit Lutra in New Delhi, Priyanka Dubey. As we told you, a Delhi court has now denied the doctor couple anticipatory bail, while in another case, another couple was today sentenced to two years of rigorous imprisonment for ill treatment of their minor domestic help. Joining us tonight, Ravi Khan, Chief Advisor of Shakti Vahini. This is the NGO that has in fact rescued uh, that 13-year-old girl and is now looking after her. Dr. Radhika Chopra, reader in sociology at the Delhi University, Veer Kashyap, COO of babajob.com. This is a website that is seeking to professionalize domestic help in the city of Bangalore and Sri Ram Khanna, Managing Trustee of Consumer Voice. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Dr. Couple Lockup made is the relationship between domestic help and employer reaching breaking point in urban India. Uh, let's put it to you, Ravi Khan, this shockingly inhuman case. You are now looking after this 13-year-old girl. Give us the reality of this case because the doctor couple have said in their defense in a statement that they had offered for the girl to go and live with their parents. Is that true or is the reality as inhuman as we see it playing out. Yes, the council had made a statement that uh, they had uh, said that uh, the girl can look for a, uh, they could place her in her father's home. But this is not the fact. Actually, the fact is that the girl was locked up and all the other rooms were also locked and, and even, the, even the front door was locked. And the girl was in a dehydrated condition when she was rescued with all types of marks on her body and there was no food at the home. She was crying and she also complained of lot of abuses by the employers and also she said that she was threatened 
that and she said that she would be threatened by um, registration of false cases these are the things which they tried to threaten this young girl of 13 years old and it was a complete violation of fundamental rights and various constitutional right which is guaranteed to each and every ch children and citizen of this country uh, and, and let me put it to you uh, uh, veer kashyap you have a lot of experience in dealing with people who are uh, you know coming to you for domestic help and you are placing them in homes is this are these cases increasing do you see these increasing cases of this horrifying abuse of minor domestic help locked up like this in a home denied food Well let me just uh, state that this is absolutely a terrible incident that that we heard about in Delhi today but uh thankfully we've not seen anything like this happen um on any of the employers have hired from our site and we we do put into place uh, as many safeguards as we can to prevent this about you know people hiring underage help and and we and but what we really focus on is empowering the job the job seekers and so they know that they right. that they don't have to tolerate and giving them legal rights giving them access to legal rights and they, that, that, that at least they have access to your agency maybe you are actually showing the way that this sector has to be professionalized don't these people realize i mean i'm really shocked don't these people realize they are they are offenders under the juvenile justice act the child labor act you're taking a 13 year old you're making her work you're imprisoning her you're keeping her locked up you're denying her food and 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 this is common what see, sort of let, inhuman behavior is see, this see let's let's not say this is common these are cases But which more do more happen cases are coming to light yes. happen and the real problem is the inequity of the relationship uh, let's understand such a person working in such a circumstance is coming from a deeply poverty ridden background probably surviving in in her village at 28 rupees a day or less which is the planning commission estimate of below mm -hmm. the poverty line mm -hmm. and when he or she gets the opportunity to come to a city where there's a huge demand for domestic helps with family upper middle class families earning more than 20 25000 rupees a month it's a life changer for that for that person even for the for the domestic help yes, life changer for them from 28 rupees a day right. you you double so you your income you come to a completely different reality you, ha you have proper food to eat you have right. a home to stay and you also get a salary and today you know the domestic helps in in the city of delhi are earning anything between 2 and a half to 3 and a half thousand or 4000 rupees but a month but should they be locked up in this oh, way this is the where the exploitation takes place but you were saying that they, 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 they may not have any had any alternative yes you see the 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 thing is that exploitation in any form is not welcome no but the relationship between the domestic help and the employer needs to be made more equitable by putting more rights as the gentleman just said in the hands of the employee so that if they don't like a place and they are being exploited they can switch uh, switch uh, jobs and which and jobs are not difficult to find but these people are not probably literate enough and not having enough information or support requires a support system to be built and what is the government doing the government in any state is far too busy doing other things mm -hmm. than caring about how domestic helps should be looked after right. they need to be looked after they need to be looked after and this relationship perhaps needs to be looked at and analyzed and and really made much more professional radhika chopra you know if you talk to people in the urban centers they will all tell you they don't get decent help that their decent help is robbing them there are cases that they have of crime they have cases of exploitation on them by their domestic help so it seems as if this relationship is a relationship of mutual suspicion mutual disregard and yet you're living under the same roof in these highly proximate circumstances it's an explosive high tension relationship yes well sagrika i think uh, it goes deeper than that i think from the growth of the middle class after post liberalization it's generated a migration of a new working class into the city everything everybody from couriers to cooks who serve in middle class households uh but the problem is that we know them as types not we don't know their biographies unless they come to us uh in a traumatized state um we know them as people who are untrained semi trained part time whole time uh literally like you know cars or possessions this is a hatchback this is a sedan she is a part timer she is a live in even though we are completely dependent 
our households are completely dependent on the labor of domestic workers. We find no place for them in our homes. If you just look at the kind of new architecture of the new homes that I see all around me, I live in Greater Kailash Part 1, and to the left of me and to the right of me are these enormous structures coming up. There's more place for parking cars in those structures than there is rooms for domestic help. There is no place for domestic help, literally, and I mean metaphorically and otherwise in our domestic lives, except when we can extract their labor, their work, uh, govern their time, control their time. And I'm actually a little alarmed by two things. One, the way in which this young abused girl in the interview that you've just uh, shown, you, uh, shown all of us and your viewers, she talked about her employee, uh, employer as Bhabi. Hmm. And on the reverse side, we have your panelist telling us uh, in uh, quite uh, you know, uh, quite unselfconsciously it seems to me that well you know she's a lot better off here because she's not living on 28 rupees a day but something double than that. She's getting better food and so on. The fact that this food may really be controlled, denied, when she can eat it, where she can eat it, what she can eat. How is this freedom or a better life? You tell me. Do you want to respond to that? Yes, I, I'd like to respond to this. Uh, this uh, the, the, the case that we have just seen is probably an exception. There are thousands of households in the city of Delhi where families treat their domestics literally as part of their family. And they probably eat the same food, they have, they have a bed to sleep in, they have the security of the household. So it's actually about how well-meaning the family, employer family is that will not exploit the children. And there are some who will be mean. So let's not paint everybody in the same brush. Of course, we do need to regulate this. But who is who is looking at regulating this? The government of the Delhi or any yes, other state government point, hardly it's regulates. It's not it. about see, see actually it's not yes, about Mr. regulation. Yes, it's not about it's not about regulation. It's not about migration. It's not about poverty. Let me make it very clear that human rights are non-negotiable. Why should children and daughters of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and West Bengal and from these eastern states come and wash utensils in Delhi? We are living in a colonial man uh, mindset. Why should people come here? They should be given opportunities there. And it is not about regulating. Why should children be allowed to work? It's high time that we ban all types of forms child labor because this cannot be accepted now in this 21st century that in India children will be working in this big cities. We are seeing these cases regularly. This is right. an organized but crime. You, you, lot, lot it's, of it's organized crime. crime. I may, Swagarika, yes, Radhika. If I may come in for a second. Um, I think the outright violence of this case draws our attention to what is in fact a deeper and more systemic problem. Uh, the outright violence is only the tip of the iceberg and possibly a more scattered example of what in fact is, as I say, a systemic extraction of labor and work at an everyday level. It may be the labor of children, it may be the labor of adults. It is still an extractive labor relationship and this is not just modern Slavery. I think this is a, the new modern form of family that is based on slave labor. So it's based yes, on this slave is labor. This is slavery. It is modern this day is slavery. Okay, that it, See, it, it, we need it, to understand. Slavery and organized we need crime. to understand. Okay, why? You, you believe this is actually not slavery, it's demand and supply, no, it's, giving it, people a is, job. This is breeding under the forces of economic done. growth in the country where middle class families are getting high income time. they human have a demand they are, they are creating a demand and there is a supply human rights are not negotiable yes I but, but who is there in the villages of bihar and jharkhand to educate important. people about human but rights that it's about food that, it's about that food. That food. Yeah. It's demand and supply what you are saying is it's about demand and supply so what that that doesn't mean Mr. that, Rabi Khan, mean that our they, they're daughter. getting a job and many many of them would would argue that you can argue that many of them are getting a job and perhaps uh, are getting cash not about that their families appreciate it is organized crime People okay. are being sold and purchased. It's an no, that, organized what, crime. What my friend Mr. Ravi is trying to do it's, is give a commentary on what he sees. But the reality is that 
hundreds of thousands of poor people are coming to every major city every day. And, 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 and it's not only about it's not only about what's happening in Delhi. I recall I recall the case against Indian diplomats in USA who were charged with a similar who were charged with a similar similar crime. So is it, is it right? Radhika, let me let me put to you let me put to you the point. Uh, you know, is 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 it a is it a general trend that urban families are abusing their domestic uh, help, or you know, are there some families that do treat them with respect, that do treat them as human beings? Uh, there, there there could be, of course, this is shocking because this is a doctor couple that has done this. No, no, just just uh, no, yeah. no. Forget about whether it's a doctor couple or not. The fact of the matter is whether it's somebody is treated with kindness or somebody is treated with violence. It's entirely in the hands of the employer. Right. The right. person herself who is working has no rights to say, I demand respect. This is my right. dignified position. I demand to use the toilet when I can. And this is the place that I need a proper toilet. She's to entirely go to. in the what hands of about? the employer. Actually, the more she is entirely in the hands of the employer. And the moment we frame this relationship into a demand and supply paradigm, then maids and cars are coterminous. In fact, we See, find more yes. space for cars than we do for then maids. maids. See, the, 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 what she is saying is but, correct. Okay, they are holding your horses. Because, you know, the, la the, the, the price of land per square foot in the city of Delhi mm -hmm. is probably very high mm -hmm. and, therefore, the and therefore right. and therefore the, the allocation of of, of of room for servant quarters and is, parking is, spaces is, 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 so there's an economic logic but there is a caste system data. in the mind isn't there there is a caste system in the mind let me, let me and say we simply have not become when the market begins to beings. operate with inequities the state has to step in so it is the obligation of the state the state governments where this happens to frame rules and regulations to enforce an equity between the employers and right. the employees. Okay, so it's not going to happen unless the state enforces the laws. The market is not going to correct Okay, itself. let's take a short break and come back. Is India's domestic servant culture, and I use the word servant in quotes, nothing but modern day slavery you were telling me it's not modern day slavery because there are cases of abuse there are cases of exploitation but they are exceptions and the reality is that large many communities are able to actually educate their children and have a better life because they can work in the domestic sector i must tell you in the city of delhi there are many domestic servants whose children are being educated in public schools because of the right to education reservation for economically you know weaker sections and there are, and there, it's a very, very fiercely competitive domestic uh, uh, servants market. A 100 rupee increment yeah. will find one domestic leaving the job in one family and going to the next. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a very price competitive right. market. Right. And, and it's Is not it slavery at all. Is it? Because the, the, the employee has the option of leaving the job and going to the next job of right. her choice. It's a very competitive market. It's a right. competitive market. Uh, m m Mr. Mr. Ravi Khan, yeah. actually, you know, many would say that they are being exploited by the domestic sector, uh, by the domestic staff, because they are forced to give very high salaries. They are actually uh, forced to uh, comply with uh, all kinds of whims and fancies. There are many employers across urban centers who will tell you that they are actually in the, the underdog when it comes to uh, good domestic help, simply because it is a seller's market. Let me make a point. See, okay. first of all, no children should be allowed to work till the age of 18. Okay. Number two, let me make, you have to see the number of missing children. Jharkhand is reporting 8,000 missing children. West Bengal, 13,000 missing children. So, Assam, so what's your 15, solution? So, Mr. Ravikant, what's your solution? All should, should, should urban employers refuse to employ children? I mean, that is the basic human thing to do. Refuse to employ uh, is, is children. Mr. Is Mr. Ravikant going to feed them if they don't have employment? This is the question I'd like to put. He, it's very nice to talk about human rights, but what about food on the table? Are the state governments in Bihar and Jharkhand going to look after the children? Or are you going to look after the children? If a, if a, if a, if a boy from Jharkhand, a girl from Jharkhand doesn't get food to eat, it doesn't mean that you should, they, the girl should come and wash your utensils. But what if it she's sold into prostitution? No, Mr. Ravikant, no, no. what if she's and trafficked they, uh, and sold into prostitution? What if, what if prostitution yes, becomes the other making, option? What if she's trafficked? Surely being in the domestic sector I, is perhaps making, a lesser evil. I am making this point. 
I am making this point. It's a big, big organized crime. Okay. Lakhs of rupees are being made into it, this business. Okay. Girls and children are being sold. Right. And they are either sold in Haryana, might be for marriages, they may be sold in GB Road, they may be sold in any places that right. we are we're, getting we're running against uh, it's Radhika modern Chopra. Day slavery. It's Radhika Chopra. It's modern what is day the slavery. way what is the way to deal with this relationship? How can this relationship be made equitable? How can this relationship be made one of equals? How can there be mutual respect? Should the state come in with laws? Should civil society act? Should RWAs get into the act? Should there be awareness programs of employers as well as employees? What 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 in your opinion are the solutions now? Let's look at the way forward. I think the solutions lie with the middle class families of employers themselves. It's not about the state. It's not about RWAs. It's about us and our homes. What should our home be? Should it be a place of care and exchange and dignity for everyone? Or should it be a class divided space? It's a very That's good a point. To ask yes, but let's, let's not forget. Yeah. The, the, the environment of the Indian middle class is an uh, environment of hypocrisy, double standards. They'll say one thing on television and exactly do the opposite in their private lives. Where is the guarantee to see the people who are talking about like this are not themselves employing? So we can't rely on, no, on individuals. No, we can't rely we on what the laws media says. We have to have legislation. You can't have self-regulation. Okay. The middle class in India of the 21st century is the most hypocritical okay, class but, 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 of all our classes. Veer Kashyap, would you like to see but, more organizations? Veer Kashyap, would you like to see more organizations like you, which are trying to professionalize the domestic sector, which are trying to uh, uh, create an interface, be, be bridge builders between the domestic help and the employers? Would you like to see more organizations like you actually yes, come so, up? So, Certainly, I mean, we're, we're all about empowering people with information, be it the employer, be it the job seeker. We believe when people have the best information, they'll make the best decision, the yes. best rational decision. And so if someone in Jharkhand is able to find a job okay. in their locality and do that job, then that's their, that so you don't they have believe, that choice. So, you, so don't that domestic help, you don't believe that domestic uh, help should be banned? You don't believe that the domestic uh, sector, work sector should be banned or shut down? You believe it should no, be reformed? There's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a right way. I, I think it's all about basic human dignity, and it's about the way people right. treat people. I mean, it, you, you're going to see abuse in you see abuse in factories. You see in many different industries. So it's not. We should not allow children to work. I mean, children work in factories, right? Let's children even work point. in factories to this day. This. It's not right? just the domestic it's sector is exploiting. The domestic sector. Factories are also exploiting. Let's Very quickly, not. the last word. It should. It should clearly be illegal. It so that, should definitely be illegal. We should accept that all children should and not be allowed to work. Yeah, we, I, agree we right to okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. But the reality will happen. Not be allowed to work. The, the reality of keeping children out of work of will be no when their families can work. afford to feed them. By talking about human let's, rights, we can't feed them. Okay. We're it. talking about human rights, we can't feed them. But I think, I think, I think let's end the discussion with what Radhika Chopra says. Is let's make our homes centers of care and dignity and respect. Let's treat our domestic help with respect. And then we can expect mutual mutual uh, respect back. Let's make our homes nurturing and not uh, not uh, symbols of a class divide. Thanks very much indeed. Ravi Khan, Radhika Chopra, Veer Kashyap, Sri Ram Khanna, thanks very much indeed. The question we are raising is that is the relationship between domestic help and employer reaching breaking point? What are you telling us? 78 years. Thanks for watching. Thanks.